Last time we were looking at graphs in the complex plane and we looked at very, very simple graphs. Okay? Do you remember we looked at graphs like, say, this? Right? We approached it algebraically, we approached it geometrically, and we determined, well, how would you describe, verbally, how would you describe the locus traced out by this equation? It's a circle. What else can you tell me about it? Where is it? Where is it, where is it placed? It's at its center at the origin, and its radius is 2. Right? Because, in fact, by definition, that's what it means, right? The modulus is the distance from the origin. So it's the distance from the origin to z is 2. So therefore, it has radius 2. Okay? Uh, we looked at some inequalities. We looked at stuff like this. I think this was... Did we do greater than or less than? We looked at this. We have to just tackle them algebraically. So here you can see your imaginary components are going to cancel out, which leaves you with just double the real component. You do your algebra, you get a region that accords with that, okay? And on and on we go. Now we're going to push a little further on this, and uh, we're going to need our, our compasses to help us. So we'll get there. Here's the first more difficult example I want us to pick up on. Okay. <coughs> Alright, now, before we tackle this guy and do any um, algebra with it, okay, um, or, or any geometry, I just want you to remember back to when we were doing vectors, and we said, okay, if I've got Z1 here, Okay. And if I've got Z2, say, here, where would, roughly speaking, where would the position vector of Z1 take away Z2? Where would you expect to go? How would you roughly describe it? At Z2. Like, it's the so, so here's Z2, right? So if I'm thinking about Z1 take away Z2, you should th be thinking about the negation of Z2. So everything's in the first quadrant at the moment. So negation will come over here to the third quadrant down here. Right? So then where, what's going to happen when I combine them? Yeah. So the vector will be Z1 to Z2. Okay, now, I'm going to put that one in. Before I put that one in, the position vector, position vector, is coming off of the origin, right? So really, the position vector would be this guy, right? That would be Z1, Z2. I'm doing it very roughly, okay? Now, we can see, because of the parallelogram law, that if that is Z1 minus Z2, the position vector, I can consider a free vector parallel to that up here. Oh, so it's like that way. I thought it was the other way. Okay, that's very important which direction it's going, right? I hope you can see why it has to be going that way. It has to be going that way. If you consider the position vector, always come back to the position vector because you can compute that just by a straightforward, like if you, if you know what these numbers are, right? Like, okay, let's just do some guesswork. Okay, I don't know. Maybe that's something like 5 plus i. What might that be? I don't know. 1 plus i. 4i or something like that, okay? So when you do z1 take away z2, do the real parts first, you're going to get 4, uh, i take away 4i, minus 3i. So it's got to be down there. And once you've got the position vector, you know which direction it's going in, and then you can move around and consider the free vectors, okay? So critically important that you see it's in that direction. Okay, uh, as he said, therefore since it's up there, this really is another way of saying, what's the distance between Z1 and Z2, right? What is that distance there? Okay, now what does this mean then? When I see this guy over here, this is again the distance between two complex numbers. The first complex number is a variable, just like in these cases it's going to move around, just like the normal point in the locker stars. But then this guy is, well, where's he? That Let's get a drawing, shall we? <laughs> Let's consider this geometrically. We'll do the algebra in a minute. <coughs> when I said Z1 take away Z2, right? I mean, there's this point over here, which is positive, positive, and this point over here, which is also positive, positive. Okay? So when I say this, Z take away 2i, the point I'm considering is not negative 2i. It's 2i, right? Z's one point. 2i is the other point, and I'm finding the distance between them, right? That subtraction doesn't mean the point is minus 2i, it means I'm comparing them, I'm taking the difference, okay? So therefore, what this means is, in fact, I'll write this for you. This um, left-hand side means the distance from z to the complex point 2i, right? Now, this makes sense back in terms of when we were talking about changing the frame of reference, right? If I just say mod z, that's just the distance from the origin, which is really, really should be written like this, right? Because you're comparing the distance from z to zero, the origin, OK? 
okay? But now I'm changing my point of reference. Two I is now my, my center, okay? So that's where I'm comparing from. All right, if the left-hand side means the distance from Z to 2i, what does the right-hand side mean? It's not in the right form for us at the moment. How can I change it? It should be absolute value of Z, take away something, right? You see that? Take away something, that's what tells you to compare distances. What am I subtracting? Negative one, negative one. Yeah, good. I've got to have a double negative there to get my positive, and then I've got plus I, right? So minus one plus I, that's another point. And I'm comparing my distance to that as well. So if I have a one, two, there's two i there, because I'm on the imaginary axis. Here's the real axis. Minus one plus i means I'm going this way, one unit, and then I go up, one unit. Is that okay? So that there is minus one plus i. Okay, uh, it's a bit tricky because this is negative one. This point, the point is 2i, but where it is on the axis is y equals 2. Does that make sense? Because I'm, I'm talking in imaginary units here. Okay, so it's a bit, it's a bit weird that I, you could label this 2 or you could label it 2i. They're different things. Okay, now, hold on a second. What does this mean? I want the locus of points that are the same distance from 2i as they are from minus 1 plus i. Okay. Well, we did this when we were out of the basketball courts, right? And we're going to go out of the basketball courts again with our compasses. When I ask you to say, go stand somewhere, I've got two people here, go stand somewhere so you're the same distance from both people, okay? Immediately, someone was cheap and they ran to the easy spot, namely the, yeah. the midpoint, right? So they'd go right there, okay? But that was not the only point, okay? In fact, because of the numbers that we were cho we've chosen here, there's another really easy point you can see. This point right here, that's i, isn't it? Can you see why that's obviously the same distance? There's, a, there's one and one, okay? Now, I, I can keep going, right? There's another cheap point there, and I can string these together, right? We know what shape this is. What, what line am I tracing out? x equals to negative, if y equals I, um, to negative one. If I put this line in here, this interface, yeah, what kind of line is it? I'll get the equation in a second, but what kind of line is it? What verbally, how do I describe it? Okay, it's, it's a straight line, obviously, right? But it's not just any straight line, it's perpendicular, and because it goes through the midpoint, it's the bisector. Okay, so this line here, the locus of these points, right, is the perpendicular bisector of the interval from 2i to minus 1 plus i. Okay. Now, because you've been given really easy numbers in this case, right? I think we can probably work out what the um, equation of this line is, right? What does the gradient look like to you? Minus one. Minus Looks one. like minus one. How do you know it's minus one? Because the, um, the gradient between the two points is one. Good. So that gradient's easy to see. It's one. I want the perpendicular, so it's <laughs> negative one. So I'm going to get something in the form y equals minus x. What's my y-intercept? It's, it's plus one. Okay. So that's the equation that I'm guessing. Can I verify it algebraically? Hmm. 